Namaste. Welcome. Today I'm going to be taking you on a journey of fashion. Fashion of India and how it's transformed over the century and ages. A journey full of vibrance, texture and even hardships. The Rajputs, the word originated as the Rajputra or the Rajas Put and it is basically the royal class and the Rajputs uphold a very important place uh, in the history of India, we can say from 6th century to uh, 12th century. They had a very uh, rich cultural history along with the clothing or architecture. Royal Nas was, uh, you can say, very much uh, elegant in its clothing and slowly and gradually jewellery took a very outshining position in the Indian culture. If I start with the ladies, that is the queens, so they used to have a very particular attire of clothing. If I start from the head, the chumar had been there, then uh, the nathni, which used to be the piercing of the nose, that was being there. Then the rani har, non akha har. These were very much embedded uh, with stones. Then uh, bangadi, that is the kara. Various different types of karas were being uh, worn by the queens or the princes at that time period. And hatpan, that is a hatpan was being there. Uh, they were also a very essential part of the dressing at that time. And the type of clothing, if I talk about, you can say the lehengas and um, a sort of a sari which has been um, rounded around and fall on one of the shoulder. Even the general people were also not, uh, you can see, as it has been shown in various of the foreign accounts that India depriving or such things were not there. Even the common people were attired beautifully. Gold was used widely, silver was used widely, uh, besides this, mutis or the pearls uh, of colourful textures were also being used. Uh, such uh, were the, you can say, the common features even for the royalty as well as for, for the common men. The clothing might be simpler in the form, but that doesn't mean it was not of fine quality. So we have a composite, a new confluence of culture and that was beautifully assimilated. So this became a part and parcel of the clothing at that time period. The colonial period in India obviously started with the establishment of the British rule. Uh, the British rule affected the manufacturing of clothes in various ways. Earlier, Britishers uh, were interested in buying the finished products. And that was a thing prior to the Industrial Revolution. But once the Industrial Revolution took place in Great Britain, now these Europeans wanted to have fine qualities of yarn. India was one such country where this uh, yarn was very good. Once the Britishers established their rule in India, not only the cottage industry or the weaving sector or the trading sector in this particular textile suffered, but it depleted the resources, it depleted the economy, it depleted the conditions of the weavers. Many weavers they deserted the villages, many took up some other occupation. So the colonialism, some one way or the other, had really led uh, the, you can say, a devastation on the cottage sector of the country. Khadi or Khadar. You can see it, uh, it is a yarn, not very much smooth, but Mahatma Gandhi, he has taken Khadi as a symbol for self-reliance and Charkha, uh, the power of Charkha basically united the Indians as such. And uh, he wanted to uh, imbibe the concept of Swadeshi 
so therefore khadi was given very much importance uh during the colonial times the satyagrahis with their gandhi topis or the gandhi caps with their jawahar jackets uh with uh, the khadi kurtas it became a symbol of defiance against the british rule and khadi india is doing very well it is doing a great job in this direction it is giving you can say impetus uh to this hand woven cloth as well as it is giving economic benefits to the weaving class of our sector as well as it is upholding the heritage or the legacy of the country and also making the youngsters aware how khadi became a symbol of defiance against the british rule how it became a symbol of self reliance how it connected the people in the nationalist movement of india I feel that India because of the social media you know exposure especially the youth has become very expressive about how they feel many people are exploring with indian textiles i have uh, i have seen many designers who are doing fluid fashion in terms of handicrafts textiles and you know curating a new output out of it but right now it has been adapted with this generation mostly the youth has adapted fashion as a means to express themselves so they are using fashion and the, uh, as a means of expression of who they are because of their gender identity because you know gender is not supposed to be driven by what you wear it is supposed to be who you are so now people are adapting to the feeling that clothes are meant to be worn by everybody you know it should not have a label and i feel uh, even uh, even third world genders that are uh, coming into the place people are more vocal about their sexuality and uh, women and men are open to exploring the silhouettes more openly i feel now so i feel our future is moving towards a more uh, thoughtful fashion and not like just producing garments for the trend purposes